All right, Mark Hero, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, so I know a lot of our listeners are familiar with your work. You probably hold the world record for teaching the most men how to shave. Uh, how did you become everyone's dad on the internet <laughs> when it comes to shaving? Actually, the uh, the whole thing is kind of random, and uh, it started about, oh, almost six years, uh, almost 10 years ago when I had received a camcorder for uh, a, a prize for a conference I att attended. And at the time, Coincidentally, one of the uh, forums I was on related to old school shaving uh, started talking about this new service called YouTube and uh, how somebody should make a video on how to uh, shave with old school equipment. And I sort of took it as the gauntlet being thrown down and uh, made some test video and showed it to the guys on the forum and they all seemed to actually like it. So I put it up on the on YouTube and it languished there uh, for a few weeks as I figured it probably would. And then somebody uh, submitted it to Lifehacker and uh, it exploded from there. Uh, that was the first big coincidental takeoff. In fact, I still to this day get referrals from Lifehacker onto uh, my video page. So that's one of the first things that really started it. And uh, I just kept on going. And I think partly organically and partly uh, due to some uh, uh, lucky coincidences uh, all of a sudden, the the videos took off, and uh, I now have over 8 million video views uh, of uh, something that would normally be totally random, uh, shaving, uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm actually uh, doing it full-time now. As of, uh, uh, as of April, I retired from my 9-to-5 uh, desk job took early retirement, and I'm doing videos and my Sharpologist website full-time. That's crazy. So you're making a living teaching something that most guys should have learned from their dad. That's true. And the thing is, most people haven't learned uh, to shave properly from their dad or whoever. And it's uh, I've kind of become their second dad, like you said. Yeah, yeah. And why do you think that is? Because like, you know, shaving is one of those things you think that, oh, yeah, dad should like sit down and like tell his kid, here's how you shave. But for me, like my dad didn't do that. I sort of, uh, what my first shaving experience was I snuck in to his bathroom and uh, bogarted one of his razors uh, from his dop kit and then tried to shave on my own. I ended up like taking off a chunk of my lip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was really embarrassing because everyone knew, like I was like 12 Right, and I, had, I, hadn't, I hardly had any peach fuzz, so everyone knew what I was doing. It was really embarrassing. Um, but I mean, is that how most guys learn how to shave? They just sort of do it on their own. You know, I, I think though, I think so these days. Uh, you know, for me, uh, I actually learned with a electric razor. I, I shaved with an electric razor for thirty odd years. Uh, my dad had an electric. Uh, he handed me his old one. And I stuck with electrics for 30 years before I kind of saw the light and, and uh, tried uh, traditional shaving, uh, largely due to a young woman in my life who is now my wife, uh, who wanted uh, to caress my smoothly, freshly shaven face and wanted it, wanted it more smooth than I could get with an electric shaver. But um, getting back to your question, I think a lot of it is People relying on the media, uh, they, they see uh, TV commercials about how easy shaving is supposed to be with the, with the latest 27-bladed razor uh, or, uh, or zip zip with an electric razor, done in two minutes kind of thing. And I think the, the skill set, the learning curve 
uh, has largely been lost uh, to uh, external forces. And now, it's not that difficult to pick up. It's not that difficult to learn. In some cases, you have to kind of unlearn some bad habits. But uh, I think part of this is, is the, the time involved uh, with just wanting to get something done and, and get on with your life. And another problem is other people uh, just don't want to spend the time uh, to pass something on. Yeah. So, and here's the, I mean, so why is there this, just this interest, right? This explosion in interest in traditional wet shaving. Like you said, the video on Lifehacker, like I posted on Lifehacker, has gone bonkers, you know, over 8 million views. I mean, what's, what's going on there? You know, I think it's, it's two different reasons. I think one reason is purely economic, purely financial. Uh, I think when the, the latest, Five blade razor came on the market about oh, four or five years now. That people saw the the prices for a cartridge refill and and thought to themselves, "This is insane. Why should I be paying this much?" And so they go looking for an alternative, looking for something less expensive. The other reason I, I think kind of goes back to what I was just saying about. Uh, taking the time to, to pass something on. I think some people are kind of longing for that, that family connection, that, that connection to a previous generation that maybe took things uh, a little slower, a little easier, a little more leisurely, or just wanting to reconnect with a family memory. You know, there, I don't know how many People have mentioned to me their memory of when they were a child uh, sitting in the bathroom watching their father shave. And I think they want to recapture that in some respect. And this is one way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wet shaving definitely provides, it's a ritual in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah, in a lot of ways it is, yeah. And uh, yeah, that connection between families. So for example, I have the uh, Gillette safety razor that my grandfather used. Oh, nice. And I'm still using it. And the thing's like, I don't know, 60 years old? Yeah. Um, and um, I also have my great-grandfather's straight razor. Oh, wow. And, you know, have, have had it restored. And it's just cool to think. I mean, the thing's over 100 years old. Yeah. And it's like my great-grandfather used this and my grandfather used this. And now I'm using it. And it's just it's nice to have that connection. Right. It's, I get a lot of that kind of comment. It's a, a real family or historical connection that really appeals to people. All right. So you, a lot of your videos um, and instruction is geared towards the safety razor. Right. Uh, I know if, if you're listening to the Art of Manly's podcast, you probably know what a safety razor is, but there might be a few who don't know what it is. Uh, can you describe what a safety razor is and what are the benefits of shaving with this type of razor? Okay. Well, at its base description, a safety razor is a, a bladed razor, usually one blade. Now, the, some people think that cartridge razors are a form of safety razors, and, and that's fine. But uh, for, for our purposes, let's assume a safety razor is a single blade with either one or two edges, typically two, and what most people associated it with is the old Gillette uh, twist to open uh, single blade double edge razor that, as you said, your father or grandfather might have used uh, that really became famous in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And it, so, I mean, what are the, the benefits of, of using this type of razor? I mean, like, look, I mean, you, the marketing on these multi-blade razors is like, well, you got multi-blades, you can get done faster, you can get closer to the skin. Are there benefits to this type of blade? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. The first is purely economic. The cost of a safety razor blade in bulk is a fraction of the price of the typical cartridge. Um it varies slightly anywhere from under a quarter to maybe 75 cents. So average about 25 to 50 cents per blade in bulk. Uh, so there's a, a huge 
difference right there from the typical cartridge. Also, a safety razor, a single razor, will tend to give you less uh, irritation uh, than a multi-blade cartridge. Uh, typically, a single-blade cartridge, pardon me, a typically a safety razor blade uh, does take a little longer to use, but not much. But the shave you can get with it is equal to or better than a cartridge as long as you're using proper technique and proper products. Yeah, that's one thing I, one of the reasons I made the switch over to safety razor shaving uh, initially was with the multi blades, I was getting just really bad bumps. My skin just, my face was just red and just felt terrible after I shaved. It was really close, right? I didn't have any like super smooth, uh, no no uh, whisker sticking out, but it just was irritated as all get out. Right, and that's largely due to the the lift and cut technology of the typical cartridge, or what I like to call the 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 yank and slice. Uh, the concept is called hysteresis, and the the problem with that is that as you said, it, it can really create some real problems with the skin. With a safety razor blade, as long as you are properly preparing the face and have a good lather, you don't need a lift and cut technology because the hair will be about 25% more flexible and slightly ease out of its follicle. So using a single blade will give you the same type of shave as a multi-blade, but with a lot less irritation. So let's talk about the, the, the prep that goes on because a lot of guys who are using the uh, multi-blade cartridges, like they might, some of guys, I've seen guys just use like splash on water and then shave right. uh, with these things. Um, in order to get a good comfortable shave with the safety razor, there's a little more prep involved. So what are the steps that are involved to get a super close, comfortable shave with a safety razor? Sure. Actually, it should be the same as with any razor. And as you said, a lot of people don't do it. But the first step is properly cleaning and hydrating uh, the area to be shaved, which we'll assume is the face. And that means lots and lots of hot water and a gentle uh, soap. Uh, what you don't want to use is a body bar or a deodorant bar. Uh, because it strips away too much of the natural oil on the skin that you really need in conjunction with the shave product to get a, a, a good shave with. So a gentle cleaning with a facial soap uh, or a facial cleanser kind of thing, even something like Noxzema uh, will work great, along with lots and lots of warm water, will clean the skin, hydrate the skin, and and soften the stubble to the point where you can get a proper shave, really, with any razor. And, I mean, what about the badger brush? It's a lot of people associate, like, if you're going to shave with the safety razor, you need a badger brush. Do you need a badger brush? You know, a badger brush is not required, but it sure makes it a lot nicer. Uh, and I should say a brush in general. You know, it doesn't have to be badger. There are certainly uh, uh, other hair brushes available, anything from horse hair to boar hair to even synthetics. And as long as you get something uh, uh, reasonably well built, uh, it really can make a difference in that it will spread that lather much more evenly, kind of surround each individual hair follicle, uh, kind of wash away or sw swipe away the tiny bits of debris that might be uh, at com next to a, a, a follicle of hair, and, and just generally performs better, but it's not required. Okay. Well, you talked about like it, in the, a lot of the shaving forms and the shaving content out there, like, everyone's like badger hair is the, the standard. Why is badger seen as like the standard for a good shaving brush? Uh, badger hair is one of the few types of animal hair that hold water really well. Most animals want to uh, shed water off of their hair or their fur but the badger can actually retain water, and others can as well. I mean, as I said, the boar and the, the horse come to mind, but badgers do it best. 
Okay, yeah. I've, I've had a boar brush. The one thing I've had problems with, it gets smells. <laughs> the, yeah, the funk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, been takes, there, done that. Yeah, it takes a while for you to go away. You have to sort of like soak your brush for a bit, and then after a while, the scent will go away. And that's really something any natural hair brush will have to some extent. Some manufacturers treat the brush better than others. So I've had plenty of badger hair brushes that had quite a bit of funk on them. Uh, horse can be pretty funky. Uh, and it, as you said, all it really takes is some shampooing with a good, uh, a good animal hair shampoo or even just some, some lather from a, uh, from a shaving product massaged in really good, rinsed a few times, and after a week or so, a week or two, the funk largely disappears and, and you don't smell anything except uh, the, the, the shaving lather you're working with. Okay. So for those who are listening and they're like, I want to start doing this, are there some brands you recommend that are like good starter brands? Because the one thing people who get into uh, old school shaving is that it can get really expensive really fast if you let it. Uh, That's true. Yes, and, and it can become like a hobby and a, and a very expensive hobby. <laughs> um, you probably know well know this, um, but I mean, are there some good like starter brands if someone wants to give you know safety razor shaving a try? Yeah, there are some actual some actually some some good brands out there. Um, something that is widely available in the United States uh, through places like uh, the large. Uh, franchises, the large department stores, you'll often see a brand named Vanderhagen. They have a uh, a set available uh, that has a inexpensive boar hair brush and a a mug and some uh, some shaving soap, and you can find the basic version for under ten dollars or the much better. Uh, premium set for only about $25. And as I said, you'll probably find them fairly widely available in the United States. Uh, as, a, as a side note, I actually visited Vanderhagen last month by coincidence uh, and saw their manufacturing and distribution facility, and it was incredible. Uh, you often, in, in this game, you often talk to the ar- shaving artisans where they make uh, a few batches of shaving soap or shaving cream at a time. Vanderhagen makes their shaving soaps 30,000 pucks at a time. Whoa. And their distribution center has semi-trucks pull up to it uh, with pallets of these things going out to Walmart, Walgreens, Target, wherever. And, and it's that way every single day. It's, the place is just insane. Uh, I'm going to do a, a, actually an article about it on my website, Sharpologist, here in maybe next month and with some photographs and everything because it really was impressive. Uh, they are also starting to sell a safety razor. Uh, it's a, probably available in most of the same outlets. It's a decent quality, maybe not the best out there, but certainly adequate to start with. And that's about 20 to $25 as well for the uh, safety razor. So that is certainly one uh, brand that is widely available. Uh, Amazon has uh, a number of other uh, options, obviously. Uh, the, the two most popular double-edged razors, uh, without a doubt right now, are the Mirkur Model 34C, which is also called the Heavy Duty, Mm -hmm. and the Edwin Jagger DE89, which actually has uh, a number of different handle types, but the same shaving head all to it. Uh, And they're available in uh, many different online sources. Uh, Amazon is the easy one, of course. Uh, But those two are the easy recommendation because so many people have them. So many people have great, uh, uh, great shaves with them, and uh, they're reasonably well built and not overly expensive. Okay. Any shaving soaps you recommend? Sure. Uh, again, getting into sort of the the mass market thing, uh, 
you're starting to see a brand now, Pacific Shaving. Uh, they have a caffeinated shaving soap and aftershave that is excellent. Uh, another fairly widely available brand is uh, Cremo Cream, which is really a brushless cream but is brush friendly. You can use it with a brush if you wanted to. Uh, that is also widely available. Uh, of the other brands, uh, you'll start seeing names like Trumpers, Truffitt and Hill, Taylor of Old Bond Street. Those are uh, what's referred to as the three T's in the hobby. Uh, they are high end, but they are widely available and for the most part excellent. Um, another excellent name is Dr. Harris, and I should should mention all those brands are uh, are British brands. Um, then there are uh, a number of artisan uh, soap and cream manufacturers that uh, make very good products, but are less widely available. Okay, so I mean, what about you? Do a lot about safety razor shaving. Do you do anything about straight razor shaving? I do. Uh, I'm not a big fan of straight razor shaving myself. Uh, frankly, I'm just not as good as it as I'd like to be. I suppose if I practiced a little more, I would be. Uh, I just prefer the double-edged razor for some reason. Uh, I do use a, a straight razor. In fact, I'm just in the finishing stages of putting together a uh, sort of an online class for straight razor shaving where I kind of go through some uh, I don't want to say shortcuts, but some things you can do to shorten the learning curve and make it a little bit easier. But I must say that for myself, uh, for some reason, I just prefer the the weight and the technology of the double-edged razor over the straight. But a lot of people love straight razors. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've do the straight. I don't do it all that often because you're right. right there is a, a very uh, steep learning curve with the straight razor. Um, and if you don't do it right, you'll slice your ear. If you're not <laughs> that corner. Um, so yeah, I'll probably do it just every now and then when I want to, when I got some time, I want to treat myself. Yeah, exactly. A nice straight razor shave. I know we've been dogging on the multi-blade cartridges, but have like, have the big companies that make the multi-blade cartridges, have they responded in any ways or are they doing anything to improve the shaving experience because of this, uh, I mean, this return to safety, you know, single, double blade, double edged blade razor shaving? I think uh, they've noticed it, but they are uh, so ingrained in their walled garden that provides a, uh, a known profit margin for them that they are unwilling to really take a big step back. Now, that does not mean that they haven't. For example, in the India market, uh, Gillette tried to introduce a multi-bladed cartridge, and the population just didn't really go for it, mostly because it was too expensive for them. So they came up with a razor called the Gillette Guard, which is a single blade, in a, in a cartridge, but it's one blade and very inexpensive, except for the blade, it's, it's all plastic, uh, but it does have a pivot to the head and reintroduced that into the market of India and w has been quite successful with it. But they've used the Gillette Guard as sort of a third world, low cost entry product uh, and hasn't, haven't really taken it anywhere else. Now, some enterprising vendors have actually imported the Gillette Guard from India, and you can buy them online here in the United States if you want to try them. They're only like $2, and they work okay. I mean, they're not bad. So that is, is one thing. Another, I think, is uh, they are getting a little more into the pivoting technology, which is nice to see. That's kind of one thing I will credit the, uh, the 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 large shaving manufacturers for. I think the the pivot is a good idea, um, and lately they've kind of taken it to the next step with the, the ball type 
concept, which I don't really think personally gets you that much more. But it's still an interesting technology to investigate. And if someone would make a single blade with a good pivot, I think it would... Uh, I think it would work very well for a lot of people. Yeah. One thing I noticed they've been doing is, you know, especially Gillette in their marketing, talking about the the economy of shaving with their blades. So they'll talk about, well, you know, you, you buy this blade, it's going to last you four weeks or five, you know, five weeks. Because I think they're responding to that criticism that, man, these things are really expensive to buy. Um, and, I, and you can, you, you can shave for a lot less a lot less money uh, using a, a safety razor. Why would I shave with you guys? So I've been seeing their marketing on TV and in the magazines. Like, oh well, you know, if you look, if you do the the dollar, the, the average, you know, the cost per use, it's actually really affordable. But if you look at the uh, the fine print on that, they also say they are assuming that you only shave two or three times a week. Ah, okay. There's the rub. There's the rub. If you shave every day, the 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 cartridge life is pretty much the same, uh, no matter what uh, brand you get. You will get slightly longer uh, life out of some cartridges than other cartridges, some brands versus other brands. But uh, they kind of play fast and loose with uh, with the longevity by assuming that you're not going to shave as much as you did before. Okay, uh, let's get in some some brass tacks tips about how to get some better get a better shave. Uh, what can you do for shaving hard places like the neck and the jawline? Okay. Well, part of it goes back to uh, adequate preparation, making sure that skin and that stubble is as ready as it can be for the shave. And then when you do shave, uh, shave the flattest parts first. Even if you're even if your razor has a pivot, it still works best if you uh, don't actually follow the contours of the area, but sort of look at it like a diamond and shave the, the, the flat parts, the facets first. Uh, then go back and relather and shave again from a different direction and slowly reduce the stubble to an acceptable uh, level rather than try and lop it off all at once. So yeah, let's talk about that, that whole reduction versus removing. Um, this brings up the point, like shaving with the grain or against the grain, what is the best way to go about that? Sure. Well, and for those who need to understand the concept, if you rub your, your face in different directions, it'll feel rougher in some directions and smoother in others. The direction that it feels the smoothest is the grain of that beard area. And it might change depending on the, the area of your face you're, you're touching. So the idea is to get the safest, most comfortable shave by first shaving with the grain. Reduce the bulk of the stubble so it's comfortable and does not get irritated. And then go back and relather and shave across the grain. That is a direction 90 degrees from the direction of the grain. And then if you want, uh, relather again, if you want a still closer shave and shave uh, against the grain. But the one thing that will be uh, sure to produce irritation right away is if you try and shave uh, against the grain right away because you want to reduce reduce the bulk of the uh, the uh, beard uh, most carefully. I mean, what happens if you? I mean, is, what's happening is is it you're increasing the chance of ingrown hairs by doing that? Is that what the irritation comes from? That is partly that is partly the the uh, the, the issue. Yes, uh, ingrown and just razor burn redness, uh, uh, taking off more hair than the skin is ready to give up at that point. Gotcha. Well, and what can you do about razor bumps and irritation that you might get? Even if you're super careful, it might come up. What can you do to, to help uh, treat that? Right. Well, the best way to treat it is to prevent it. And the best way to prevent it is to use a, a good quality sharp blade. Uh, don't try and use your blade for longer than its life, lifespan. Uh, use a really good 
uh, shaving product and take it carefully. Take a little time to do it correctly rather than just take mindless swipes at your face. That being said, uh, there are a few treatments you can do uh, afterward. Uh, a good uh, shave balm uh, will certainly help. Uh, something that is relatively inexpensive and widely available, I like to recommend, is Nivea for Men Sensitive. Uh, the sensitive version does not have uh, dyes or uh, artificial fragrance, and it, it works very well to calm the skin. Um, I would advise against using a high alcohol content aftershave splash because that will just dry out the skin even more and make, make it even worse. Uh, there is a new product by Grooming Lounge called the Shavior, S-H-A-V-I-O-R, uh, that is made to treat bumps, irritation, and ingrowns with regular use. And it actually works pretty well. I, I used it, uh, I evaluated it for several months a while back for myself, and, and it works pretty well. Um, beyond that, uh, a good rinse with warm water followed by cool water after the shave is also uh, can be helpful for avoiding those little uh, little white pimply looking dots that often come up for some people uh, which is in a lot a lot of times just simply lather residue that's been left on the face and just rinsing that off thoroughly will will take care of that and then of course if you get a serious cut a nick uh, something like uh, a, uh, a nick stick uh, or uh, an alum block or something like that will uh, treat those types of uh, more uh, serious cuts. Okay. What about uh, toilet paper? Is that like last resort? <laughs> yeah, if you need to, sure. Uh, let plenty of people do it. I've done it myself on occasion. Go to the toilet paper. Yeah, I had to get put a Band-Aid on my lip when I, my first shave. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, are there any myths out there about wet, you know, wet shaving that you see, even in the wet shaving community, like you know, said over and over and over again? Sure. Yeah, certainly in the major mainstream media, the number of blades uh, is largely one of the least important things about uh, a razor. Uh, really, the fewer blades, the better in a lot of cases. Uh, if somebody is getting a better shave with with a razor that happens to have more blades, it is more likely due to the uh, blade technology of the razor that is not related to the number of blades. It might be the metallurgy of the blade has changed. There may have they may have changed a nonstick coating. They may have changed the design of the razor head, and that plays more of a role than the actual number of blades. In fact, uh, to my knowledge, there has never been a peer-reviewed uh, survey or, or uh, test of multi-bladed razors uh, that concluded more blades was better uh, from somebody that did not have the test funded by one of the big razor blade brands. Um, another semi-myth is the idea of the grain. Uh, certainly, if you are using a multi-blade cartridge, you, you really do need to go with the grain. But if you're using a safety razor, you can cheat. Uh, you can go in the general direction of the grain uh, without going through every little nook and cranny. Uh, in fact, I advocate when you're learning a single-blade safety razor to simply go straight down. Don't follow the grain at all. Just go straight down. It's more important to learn how to hold the razor properly and maybe not get the best shaves in the world at first uh, than to try and follow every little direction of the, the grain of your beard. So that's sort of a myth. Um, uh, the other, Another myth is uh, that the the high-end Badger brushes that cost several hundred dollars and are uh, gathered from 
badgers that are living high up in the mountains in some <laughs> uh, far off land. They're magical badgers. The magical badgers will give you a significantly better shave uh, than a low end brush. Uh, certainly, they can feel a lot better. Uh, and it, at some point, some of the mid grades do perform noticeably better than the lower grades. But after a point, after some price point and level of hair quality, uh, the amount of uh, performance you get back is not related to the hair itself, but simply the, the luxury of the experience. Gotcha. So there's no need to spend $200 on a shaving brush. Oh, absolutely not. You can spend for a good, solid a uh, really good performing brush. You can do that for well under $75 and it'll last you years. Uh, some people say that uh, shaving brushes can last a lifetime. Personally, I, I don't go for that. Uh, a badger brush is a, is a tool that does wear out, but you can certainly make them last five to 10 years with, with no problem at all and then uh, get yourself... Uh, something else down the line. Awesome. Well, Mark, where can people find more uh, about your work? Okay. Well, obviously, my YouTube channel is is where I become uh, known first, and that is uh, uh, my YouTube channel name is Mantic Fifty Nine, and then my related website, which also has links to the videos and a number of other resources, is Sharpologist dot com. Awesome. Well, Mark Hero. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Our guest today was Mark Hero. He's the owner of the website sharpologist.com. And you can also find his YouTube channel. Check that out if you want to see some great instructional videos about shaving under the username Mantic59.